Good morning, y'all. Welcome to, I think, week seven, where we'll be learning more about data. Now, this week, as compared to our other weeks, is not very language agnostic. We will be using Python. So for all you um, newbies to Python, I have made a quick crash, crash course that crash. God. Hi, ICS 1501, and welcome back to week seven, where today I will be going over the kind of basics of Python, assuming you understand the code and just mainly going over the syntactic differences. So most of these you won't necessarily need um, for your project, but I thought they'd be good to go around in case you wanted to find, um, in case you wanted to find other solutions. So uh, I will be posting a link of this. It will be on the website as well as in the YouTube description. So go ahead and you can open up this Google Colab. Okay. That being said, you can download it and then edit it yourself as well. Okay, so just to you know, start out, Python, um, Python is a little different um, syntactically compared to Java and C++, which a lot of you guys have used. Whereas Java and C++ like, need their curly brackets and their semicolons, that is not true of Python at all. Python all depends on indentation, and as we kind of go through this tutorial, you'll see it. So just to specify, um, you don't have to declare variable types. Python will intuitively choose it for you, so if you notice, like. If I say a is equal to five, what do you think that will be? An integer. And then if, if a is equal to, in quotes, five, that would be a string. And if a is equal to 5.0, that would be a float. So we're gonna go ahead and run this, and this is how we check the type right here. So go ahead and print that. It's gonna run, 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 run. Sorry, when it first boots up, it takes a sec. Okay, so you notice it, it's a string, or sorry, it's an integer, a string, then a float. Okay, just to go over some string operators, we will primarily focus on plus and asterisks. Um, you can only use these on a string along with another string. If you try to co combine it with an integer, it'll produce error. Again, we'll see this later. So right now I have this, um, I have a string called nice. It says nice quote. And so if I do nice plus nice, it will have nice and nice next to it. Um, if I want the space, I have to include a string with a space in it. That being said, I can do the same thing, but with multiplication. So if I had done two here, it would print out the same thing as this, but I'll do seven just so you can see like the difference. So if you notice, this second one right here has a space. It doesn't here because we did not specify it. We just concatenated those two strings together. Okay. Now let's look at numeric operators. So these are pretty basic, I think, in a lot of the different languages. Um, we have addition, multiplication, subtraction, uh, division. Uh, the double slash is the integer division. It just goes, ahead, it divides and it will truncate the decimal. Um, and then 5% 2 is 5 mod 2. So go ahead and run that. So that makes sense. 5 plus 2 is 7. 5 minus 2 is 3. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. But then 5 um, integer divided by 2 is 2 because, again, you just cut off that decimal. And then 5 uh, mod 2 should be 1 because you, you divide it. Um, you divide it by two and whatever is left over is what's returned, which is one. All right. And something that would be really important for this activity is typecasting, because a lot of the time whenever you like receive data, there's a big chance that it will be in a string or perhaps it will be an input. Um, so something that I used here is the input function. It's another way of just taking in user input like with the Python syntax. So we're going to go ahead and say, what's your favorite number? So I'm gonna go ahead and say seven, I've used that a lot, um, and press enter. So what I have you notice right here is this num plus num um, looks real familiar to the string operator. And that being said, it looks really familiar to, the, um, to this multiplication string operator as well. But then you'll see that we will typecast this into an int. All you have to do is say the type you wanna turn it into, and then in parentheses have the variable name. 
and then go ahead and save that somewhere. So we saved it back into num. And so now when you do num plus num, you get, you know, 17, which is seven plus seven. And then seven times four is now 28 instead of seven, 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 seven. Okay. Um, that being said, there are more things you can typecast too. So like, let's think about if we have a decimal and we try to typecast it into an int, will it turn into, um, will it convert 2.5 into two or will it throw an error? So if you look at this error right here, it says it's an invalid, uh, invalid literal for an int with base 10, 2.5. So you cannot typecast anything outside of an integer to the int class. So in which case we typically um, default to float just because it allows for, um, it allows for like more possibility and there's less chance of running into error. So go ahead and run that. You'll see at first it prints out 2.5 and at first it's a string, but now it's 2.5 and a float. And then just to show you that you can't, like, you can't mix uh, string operators and num operators, we're gonna go ahead and try to add, um, add the string one to the number one. So when we go ahead and do that, it says it must be a string, not an integer because it reads the string first, then reads the plus, and it goes, oh, we're going to concatenate two strings together. However, then you see an integer and it throws an error. Okay. Um, another thing to look at is um, Boolean statements, and, which I will be using if statements to show how. So just so you know, um, true, false, and null look like true with a capital T, false with a capital F, and none with a capital N. Um, so this being said, uh, I want you to notice how for this if statement, you do not need parentheses or curly brackets. It is just, as said here, it's just if the Boolean statement, then the colon, and then whatever action is to be done. Notice this indentation right here. Without that indentation, Python will throw an error. So let's think about this. What, what is going to print out at the end? So if C is not none, but C is none, so I don't think that will print out. It's A. Hmm. So let's look. A is true, so that's a that's a good thought. Um, and if B, B is false, so I'm not too sure about that. We're gonna go ahead and print that, and it's A is true. That is the only uh, true statement there. Okay. So a couple um, a couple more examples on how to compare, just because I know it's a little bit different. You can use, you can either use something like plain English where you can say is, you can say is not, you can say or, you can say and, um, you can say in, um, and then, but you can also use the double equal sign, the exclamation point, et cetera, that you've seen in the past. I want you to notice how, okay, so A and B are strings where in the past you may have had to use um, like a string string method of compare to, you can still use that double equal sign right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that um, and you'll see a different, um, different statements depending on um, whether or not these Boolean statements are true. I'm not gonna go too in depth for this lesson, but if you wanna go ahead and look at the notebook, again, I will have that in the link. Um, okay. For loops, for this activity will also be important to recognize. Um, the syntax is a little different from, um, from the languages that you're probably used to. So we'll go ahead and have a little bit of fun with your name. So I'm gonna go ahead and input my name here, Mara. And for I in range len name. So what does that mean? So I is just the variab variable you're using to iterate. And then in range len name. So len looks a lot like length, and it takes in this argument name, which is the string. So if you want to find the length of a string, array, whatever, you would go ahead and use this method, right? Oh, this function right here, len. Now range right here is very useful when it comes to for loops. It will create a range object that basically um, that has three parameters: uh, start, stop, and step. Right here we're producing a range object that has, um, that starts at zero and ends at three, um, and ends at four. So 
it is not end inclusive, so it will just go like we've seen here, zero, one, two, three, because I have four letters in my name. So zero to four, not including four. So basically what's going on here is as we iterate, it will go from zero to one to two to three. And then I'm also indexing my string right here. So I'm saying um, the name at the index I. So at the index zero, there's M, one, A, two, R, and three A. And another way to do it, um, if we have a for each loop right here, we can just say for letter in name. So it'll just go ahead and print um, that that letter without having to index. Both of these are good, it just depends what situation you need them for. Um, typically, um, if you need to know like what index it's at, this first one is gonna be best to go for. Okay, now let's go back and see how indentation works. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you why we need that indentation and what is like the correct syntax here. So I'm gonna say if true print works, this line works right here. This is fine because, um, because Python knows like there's a hierarchy here. It's like, okay, I'll check that. Um, I'll read this line. I see that there's an if statement right here and right after, right after it on the same line is an action. However, when we have that if statement on line two, it doesn't see um, anything right next to it. It doesn't see anything indented inside. So it thinks that it's empty. But right now, Python's telling you it expected to have an indented block, so it's pretty good about catching those syntax errors. It's gonna be the same case for this right here. It, um, it's gonna expect there to be an indent right there. Okay, now to kind of go over what a function looks like. So in the past with like C++, you may have to say like the return type, the class name, the method header, and then the arguments, or the parameters. And then with Java, I don't remember it too well, but I believe it's something along the same lines. However, with Python, it's so much simpler. All you have to do is say def, as in like define, and then you just say the function name, and then like, like always, you just put your parameters in parentheses, and then you have a colon, and like almost everything else in Python, you have an indented block. So right now, I have a, um, I have the function func header, Def, uh, defined as just a simple um, addition statement. So we're going to go ahead and take this argument 700, um, or, um, take this argument, feed it in these two, uh, sorry, take this function, feed in two arguments, 700 and 801, and we're going to print that out. And then we're going to take in um, the two strings, 15 and 01, and let's see what they print out. I want you to notice here how how adaptable Python is because it is taking um, it's taking two different variable types, but it's performing exactly like as you as I intended, and also does not throw any errors. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm calling it right here. I'm calling it to print as well. I'm gonna go ahead and run that. So both of these are 1501. So with that first one, I just pick two numbers that would add up to the number 1501, whereas for the second one, I pick two strings when concatenated would be 1501. Okay, just like, just to give you a quick overview of classes, if you wanna play around with this a little bit more, I please welcome you. Um, something I just wanna note, note here is all you have to do is say class, what the class name is, of course, put in like whatever parameters you may want. Um, sorry, don't put any parameters here. Uh, you just have parentheses and colons. So this right here, I want you to recognize that syntax, that is your constructor uh, where you just take in self. So right here, um, I have a constructor and then I have two methods which are bake and fry. Fry is a cute little game where it produces a number randomly from one to 10 and you have to guess what the correct number is. And if you get it right, you fry, um, fry your potato, otherwise you may leave it too raw or burnt. So just to give you an idea of the syntax, I'm, an, I'm, an, um, I'm making a new potato right here. I'm checking to see whether or not it's a baked potato. Um, it won't be, so I'm gonna go ahead and bake it and then check to see whether or not it baked. And then I will take in a time between one through 10 and see if it fries. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. 
So how long do I want to fry my potato? I'm going to stay consistent here and use seven. It's still raw, so the cooking time was greater than seven. And go ahead and play around with that if you like. Um, and then so just to kind of bring it all together with the input and the function, all this, I know I'm going very, very fast. Feel free to read through the collab, um, skip through the video, go over topics that you're still confused on. But right here, we're just going to tie it all together. So I'm going to say, what is my favorite meal? I'm going to say Chipotle. So it says my favorite food has eight letters in it. Um, notice right here, I had to typecast this into a string because remember strings and numbers cannot be added together. And then I print out the letter. Um, I print out like each letter in the string. So I say like letter and then I use the I, which is like the variable that I'm using to iterate. And then I add one because remember, um, index will start at zero. And then I'm just picking out that letter there. Um, and then I'm using some if statements here to say how long of a name that is. Since I fall between, um, since I'm not greater than 15, I'm not less than five, it's a pretty normal length. And then all I'm doing here is calling the function. Um, as always, if you need any help, post in the Discord, um, check out this uh, check out this notebook and then feel free to um, feel free to download it play around with it as much as you want we will be available for office hours and all in all good luck and let me know if you need anything okay have a nice day y'all bye